Hey y'all, it is October the 21st, 2020-2024, and right now, here in a moment, I want to share with you a little bit of a ongoing story, and you might have heard of it actually, it's local news, but it's also gained public uh, national notoriety, I've seen it, I've seen it in plenty of different publications, we're going to talk about it here in a second. It's in concerns of this white lady down here and her white husband down here. All right, we're going to talk about that here in a second. But real briefly, I just did want to mention that a good, good friend of mine, just uh, maybe yesterday, he was saying, you know, I like your style. He was talking to me. He said, I like it, but also, you know, he said, if, if you'll allow me to give you a little bit of a constructive criticism, he said, you know, a lot of times you're just all over the place and stuff. You might have a little bit more success if you hunker down, right, and really focus on certain things, take a deep dive, and then people love that stuff, especially in concerns with true crime, because that's what we got up under my face right now. So there's, a, there's a crime incident. Probably. And to which to shout out to my man and, uh, you know, I thanked him for the advice. And I said, actually, you know, it's, I take that as very good advice. But also, you know, I was having kind of a similar thought before that, too, as well. It's focusing. Uh, it's tough, man, because I realize, you know, um, the benefits behind focusing, taking deep dives, People really, uh, you know, you get their attention once you start diving into the nitty gritty, right? And so I say, you know, that's a good idea. And in fact, I think I'm going to pursue that, all right? And so the, the case below my face right now is actually one of the cases that I wanted to start off on to really focus on it. thing is... I got several other things that I want to focus on as well. In the meantime, this is why I'm putting together like a collages of video. All right. That way I can post it, say, throughout on a day, like throughout the day, maybe post a little, uh, you know, shoot little clips, put them together, go ahead and post it on the Internet. All right. That's time efficiency. Later on, figure out if if we're not in total chaos. Later on, figure out what would be a good schedule. Doing live streams, doing Q&As, doing story times, doing that sort of live thing. In the meantime, spend every day learning more about certain situations. That way I can give you somewhat of a deep dive down and it's very intriguing sometimes sometimes i only talk about stuff a little bit but if we get down into all the details and the nitty-gritty that's also very very interesting all right and so like i said one of the first cases that came to my mind for focusing on it's actually a pretty popular one it is below my face and here's the first thing i want to say about it a lady by the name of Suzanne Simpson, as you can see above my head. All right, let's check out some images. Suzanne. All right, one thing that I wanted to first address is that I've heard a lot of people say, and I've heard it before a lot, and I'll say, oh, man, you know, it's messed up. They say, you know, uh, when it comes to pretty white women, they said they get all the attention. Whenever a pretty white woman goes missing, oh, don't they get all sort of attention? You know, uh, and, and so they're like, you know, uh, envious of that, if you will. And they, and they speak of it as like inequity or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. See, this is the feeling that they're putting off. They're jealous every time a white woman goes missing. But what I want to state at the onset is, so what? All right? I don't want you so mad for every time a white, pretty white woman goes missing and stuff, all sort of attention. Yes, every single time. It's always going to happen. 
All right, you ought to stop being so mad about it. Oh man, see, it's all it's so unfair and stuff. So unfair. She gets all the attention. Also, she's missing. We don't know where the hell she's at. It's not exactly like she's extremely privileged in this in a situation, right? When people go missing, that's not a good thing. Oh, it, it happens to get all the attention and stuff. Oh, that's unfair. Get over it, right? Get over it. Yeah, she's a pretty white woman. Everybody's concerned. And so although this might not be my number one go-to choice as far as the first uh, case to start off with, everybody's uh, concerned about this. This is local news, by the way. And so I figured since everybody's talking about it already, I might as well go ahead and talk about it a little bit myself. Now, this is a collage of videos and stuff, so... You know, this is just a collage. But later on, I want to have videos and updates dedicated directly to this situation until everybody's got closure. First of all, I hope and pray that Suzanne Simpson's got amnesia somewhere and she's like shaking it off or something. And then hopefully she'll come home. And we don't know that she, w that she won't. We don't know that she's dead. She's, she's just been gone. Since I believe October the 6th, if I remember correctly. All right, so that's a while. And so people, like I, like I say, you know, Google, of course, you can find all these sort of publications talking about it, giving you updates. The latest update is there's a hunt for missing Texas woman. Uh, like I said, Suzanne Sampson. And she's a real estate agent, and it leads to the woods outside of san antonio now i don't got a map pulled up i'll show you all the details later almost park if you if you uh, come by some of these publications almost park is smack dab in the middle of san antonio so it's a little bit confusing they say outside of san antonio no it's right in the middle of san antonio because that's where almost park is all right and it's pretty affluent a place just so that you know people typically have money living around almost park and stuff like that all right so we're, we're not only talking pretty white woman we're talking about affluence too as well of course people want to know of course people want to know so okay check this out all right just to give you a little brief uh you know overview and then later on we'll get into the nitty-gritty and all the little details and everything that we've learned thus far but just to give you a real brief summary you got this guy to my left he's his name brad simpson that's her husband that's suzanne's husband so brad simpson he's over here and he's he, he's been put into jail on separate charges they want to keep him in jail all right so that he doesn't run off or something meanwhile they're investigating this very serious situation of his wife is missing still haven't found her all right you know it's very disturbing they find it very disturbing it doesn't speak too much to your innocence that brad simpson is quite uncooperative he's been uncooperative the entire time and a lot of people find it unsettling to include Brad's own brother and his family. They find it very unsettling. They're like, dude, why isn't Brad cooperating? Please cooperate. We need to know where Susan is at now. To this day, we don't know exactly that Brad has deleted his wife. We don't know that for sure. But it seems pretty damn probable, to be honest with you. Because here's what happened. They were already having domestic issues. This was kind of documented, right? And in fact, going through a little bit of a separation. That's what we know. All right. And so there were a, perhaps a little bit estranged in some ways. We don't know in all the ways that was. But this is how the story plays out. Like I said, they're, they're in like an affluent neighborhood, these guys. All right. And in fact, there's different properties. And it's said that... Uh, that actually Brad Simpson's sense of separation had been spending a lot of time either in Bernie, which is a town above San Antonio, or even in Bandera County. They had a, they had a few different properties. This lady's a real estate agent. 
All right, so they were like separated, if you will, a little bit. But however, okay, here's how the story goes. There's a there's a party or something, some sort of party, and I want to know more about this. At a pretty affluent place, not far from their house, a little establishment called the Argyle. The Argyle. All right, so for some reason, for whatever reason, these two uh, decided to attend the party or whatever it is, the dinner, if you will, I don't know what it was, at the Argyle together. For some reason, that had to be done together. I'm not sure why. Maybe just to keep up appearances or something. And I don't know all the details. A lot of it's speculation. All right. But um, you got Suzanne Simpson. She, I'm told, was a little bit afraid. A little bit of afraid of what Brad Simpson might do. All right. Because he'd been getting a little bit uh, off the handle or something lately. All right. And so as the story goes, so I'm told, as reported, um, uh, Suzanne, she actually brings her youngest daughter with her. All right, who's a pretty young child. Brings her, her, her young daughter with her to the party and they go to the party or whatever it is. All right, and I'm told approximately they get back from this party at the Argyle and then somehow end up at the residence there at Almost Park, which is like a mile or two away from the Argyle. And they end up there, and there's, like, skirmish or something. There's a kerfuffle. There's, like, some sort of misunderstanding, and people are getting loud. So we still don't know all the details. I can assume, like, they, they took the daughter. I don't know where the daughter went. I don't know. Did they drop her off at the house? Did they drop her off at the grandma's house? Uh, I'm not really sure. All right. But there was like a kerfuffle. There was like a skirmish. And it was actually noticed by a, a neighbor there in that neighborhood. All right. They had noted that outside their window, Brad and Suzanne Simpson had something of a misunderstanding. And during such a time, uh, it was seen, Brad was seen grabbing Suzanne by the torso. Pulling her in a downward direction or something like that. So that she could not run away. Or something like that. Alright, so says the neighbor. Witness. Somewhat of a witness. Okay, and then later. A little while later. The the witness neighbor, he, he attests. It's reported that he actually heard. Uh, two or three screams or, or loud yelps, something like that, screams probably, coming from the wooded area that's near their neighborhood. Now, I've seen a lot of people on social media, they ask, they, they, they're kind of weirded out by that, and, and actually so am I, asking questions like, uh, how come you didn't call the police? You were hearing like, a woman screaming from a wooded area. You just, you just saw Brad and Suzanne. They were having a tough time. And then a little while later, you hear about two, three screams coming from the wooded area from an adult woman. And, you know, like hindsight's twenty twenty and stuff like that. I'm not really trying to get on the neighbor's case, but it's like, I just want to say to anybody... If you in your neighborhood hear a lady screaming from a wooded area uh, near your neighborhood, go ahead and call the police, even if you're just being a nervous Nelly. You can even tell them, dude, maybe I'm just being a nervous Nelly. I'm hearing an adult woman scream from the woods. You might want to check that out, please. All right, so, but nobody, nobody called the cops, all right? Not at that time. They didn't call the cops. So this witness, he's, he's he, this neighbor, he's already like s suspicious of the goings on. I don't know why he didn't call the police. But later on, he sees um, 
he sees Brad Sampson uh, take off in their GMC truck or something like that. Takes off. He notices that this guy is being very nosy at this point. Or he has an idea that something's up. So about an hour later on the timeline, from the timeline that we have, uh, he notices Brad pull up, pull back up with his truck. All right, so you notice about an hour goes by before Brad reappears. All right, and then more or less the night's over and there's nothing more to be said about that night as far as witnesses go. It's the next day, October the 7th, I'm told, that um, Suzanne is reported missing. And she's reported missing by Brad, actually. Now, this is after, uh, reportedly, um, the young, or one of the young daughters of Brad and uh, Suzanne does not get picked up by Suzanne because Suzanne is missing. So the school calls up Brad and says, hey, uh, ain't nobody picking up your daughter. And then Brad, he's like, oh, man, you know, that's what Suzanne should have been doing. All right. And so then he calls the police and reports a missing person at that particular time. All right. So ever since then, Suzanne Simpson is missing. And a little while after that, maybe a day or two after that, the police come pick up Brad and they say, look, you have other charges. We don't know what's up with Suzanne and where she's at. Can't charge you for that, but we can charge you for some of this other stuff. And you need to get to jail right now, all right? So Brad's been in jail for since then. And I'm told it's pretty well uncooperative. Now, if you've seen his face, let's see if we got a better, a little bit more of a closer up of his face. Brad Simpson. I want to see his face more. Gosh. Um, here, let's go back down to here. Give him more of a close-up of his face. Look at this man's face, though. Ah, oh, God. San Antonio Express News. See, they want me to pay 25 cents. Why? Because it's garbage. All right? 25 cents. <laughs> it's nothing, and I'm still not going to pay it. All right? Because y'all have a garbage publication. But if you check out right here, San Antonio Express News states this. And it was about four hours ago. Brad Simpson's lawyer calls charges against him ludicrous. It says key witness is not credible. Now, this all might be, you know, good tactics by Brad's lawyer. I was told he had a public defender, which may or may not be the case. Got to look into it. Here's the thing. San Antonio Express News is a terrible publication, a piece of garbage. It's not worth 25 cents. All right? But that's that's what's kind of like, kind of funny about it. You're putting out this stuff, calling it ludicrous and all this. You're behind a paywall. Most people are not going to read your bullshit. All right? Nobody's going to read this because nobody cares about San Antonio Express News except for some old retarded boomers. So I don't know what you mean by the charges are ludicrous. I don't know what you mean exactly by that, all right? But one thing I wanted to focus on is some of these pictures that you see. You see Brad Simpson right here. I mean, bruh, it's not a face of a man who's very concerned about the whereabouts of his missing wife, dude. And if we were to take a close-up, which we can't do right now, God, so I just want to take a close-up. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because if I type in Brad Simpson... S such a generic name that I bet she's not gonna it's not gonna pop up unless maybe I say San Antonio all right check this out let's see all right it gets a little bit look at this guy look at this. <laughs> it's like I don't know what you're going through necessarily bruh these are not the eyes and the expression of a man who's very concerned who's wholly innocent in this situation and very concerned about the whereabouts of your wife. That's not how you look when that happens. All right? So very concerning. In fact, there's some more. 
uh, concerning mug shots from this guy. Very concerning. Looks like this this boy done cracked, and I could be wrong, but it looks like it done cracked. All right. So so we're now in a situation of he's up in jail. They still ain't found uh, Suzanne, and they're looking all over the place. Uh, first of all, because they were taken into consideration, you know, there was an hour of time in which Brad was gone before he came back. So that means he could only go a certain distance uh, in order to perhaps, uh, hypothetically, dispose of the body. And because of this and probably other clues that they're keeping close to the chest, which I don't blame them for. Um, it's because of this, they had already searched a particular landfill. All right, I'm told on the southeast side, and actually I have it written down, what's the name of the landfill? Uh, it's called Tessman Landfill, T-E-S-S-M-A-N Landfill, on the southeast side of San Antonio. All right, and they were looking through the landfill uh, upon, like, you know... A pretty good hunch and to no avail all right there could still be Suzanne in the landfill for all they know but they haven't found her I mean it's a pretty it's it's arduous that's an arduous task but after like I don't know I think two three four days of searching through the landfill they decided well okay maybe she's not in the landfill and so now as it goes um, they're actually searching, let's see if it says in the news, they're actually searching, look, hunt for missing Texas real estate agent leads to the woods outside San Antonio. They say outside San Antonio, it's right in the damn middle of San Antonio, but they don't know and they don't care. All right, um, but they're searching through the woods because lots of times, you know, a neighborhood's going to have a little wooded area right by it, especially, you know, if it's a nice neighborhood. Um, they're searching through those woods, which honestly, a little bit expansive. It's, it's probably going to take some uh, some pretty good looking, all right? And who knows if they're going to find her there, all right? Um, for example, uh, who knows when it's going to end? I don't know. We're waiting uh, on pins and needles over here. Trying to see if hopefully maybe Suzanne is alive. And of course, a lot of relatives are pretty much figuring she ain't because she has four children. All right. And typically, you know, you don't want to be spending weeks and weeks in hiding away from your children. So we're waiting to see where exactly she might turn up. Of course, there is a little bit like. There is a little bit of a variable there because on October the 7th, you have the entire day, and I've heard other people say this as well, you have the entire day up until when the child gets out of school and they call you, which was at like 3.30 in the afternoon. So up until 3.30 in the afternoon, Brad, Brad Simpson just doing whatever. I don't know who's to say what. Hypothetically, if he hypothetically if he did it, if he deleted her, he could have got her, picked her up somewhere, and took her to somewhere else. On, on that day, on the next day, could have done that, thereby making it harder to find this lady. That's very possible, but we don't know. Of course. Uh, in time, I do believe that a lot of clues are going to come forth in which they'll be able to figure out whether or not what exactly Brad was doing on the 7th. Lord knows if, if Brad, if hypothetically, was going and, and getting rid of a body, if that's the case, he better not have had his phone on him. Because, of course, your phone's going to ping your location, probably. De depending on where you go, if he's smart at all, which it doesn't seem like he's very smart, that's the thing, it seems like he's cracked. I really don't know, but we're going to find out. I don't expect Brad to be operating on a very smart way, but perhaps he did take, if hypothetically, if he deleted Susan, perhaps he took her somewhere else, thereby making it more mysterious, and of course, he's not cooperating. So we're going to, we're going to, 
be watching this very closely and I'll definitely give you all the updates and we're going to take a deep, deep dive into this. And a lot of people are already. So, but the one thing that I'm definitely going to um, focus on, which I know, here's the thing, it's kind of the niche. It's kind of a niche that I want to carve out of these very unfortunate, unnecessary uh, events in which people resort to violence. And I wish they wouldn't. But sometimes they do, and it's human nature. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they crash out and delete each other, even delete their, their loved ones. And I don't think there's any call for that at all. All right. I just want to be very clear. There is never, ever a call for that, except in self-defense, you should never, ever go around deleting people, especially your loved ones, or just your supposed loved ones. All right, but one thing that I want to make sure to kind of um, keep keep it in my mind, and maybe some of y'all have it in your mind, is that, you know, of course, that's the true crime aspect of it, meaning... Uh, okay, what people want the timeline. People want all the details. They want to find out who did what exactly, when, where, and where the heck season's at. We need to find out where season's at. Everybody needs to find out where season's at. That's, of course, the main point. That's, of course, the most important point. Obviously, I'm not going to deny that. But, you know, one thing that comes to my mind because I'm a peculiar guy is what exactly was Susan Simpson up to? That's what I want to know, and it's still a total it's a total mystery as of right now. What did she do now? You know, obviously it's absurd to say, "Oh, she she was asking for it." That's absurd. I'm not saying she was asking for it. What I'm saying is I wonder what she was up to. I wonder because it seems like probably a situation like this has a slow build up and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up until something very bad happens. Now, with most cases, how it plays out is like you got a very concerned group of people, typically the family saying, hey, we want our loved one back and I don't blame them for that. They're like, oh, man, you know. And it's very typical. They're like, hey, you know, Susan, she's a light, uh, a shining beacon of light. And everybody loves Susan. And she's just very, um, very popular, very well known by the community. And to which uh, I would imagine for the most part, that's probably the case. They said, Brad over here acting crazy all right acting crazy and he's been acting crazy and he flew off the handle and we're pretty sure this guy's up to no good and which for the most part i gotta agree is probably probable to be honest all right it seems like because you know that'd be a, what are the odds that you're over here having physical skirmishes with your wife and then oh she ends up missing for some other reason what are the odds of that they're not very good but like I said, what I want to know is the, the actual buildup. And it's, and it's usually what people don't even care nothing about. Because if you're to think about the, the victim as an angel on earth who's never done nothing wrong. Then I think that would skew your perspective. And most most time, that's how people think. And then you think of Brad over here. This, this guy looking just nuts. He looks nuts. And you think of him like, oh, man, he's pure evil. This guy's a monster and he's not cooperating and all this. This guy over here is pure evil. So you got to think of an angel on one on one hand. And that would be Suzanne. And on the other hand, you have a total pure evil monster named Brad Simpson. That's how people usually take it in. I kind of refuse to think about it in that sense. Because as as you know, you don't want to like talk about it too much in this serious of a situation. But that's not never the case, dude. Can you imagine? You got one person who's a complete amazing angel, and everything she does is amazing, and she's never done nothing wrong in her life. And for some reason or another, she decided to marry this man who, after many many years, goes completely insane to the point of crashing out and deleting her. 
I, I can't buy that. I simply can't buy that. There's more to that story. And you know what kind of irks me is that people don't dig. They, they don't usually dig for the more. See, when it comes to true crime, lots of times they're trying to find out what. They're trying to find out where, when. They're trying to find out how. And to a certain extent, they're trying to find out why, but they don't really dig harder to find out the why. In my mind, what I want to know is if, okay, allegedly he deleted his wife, and we might find out that he definitely did do it. It seems very probable. But what I would want to know, and, and what we might not never find out once we dive deep, real deep, why the hell did you do it? What brought you to doing this? Brad, because even though I don't vouch for it, even though I think, you know, you should never resort to this, I'm willing to bet uh, Suzanne Simpson, who's regarded as an angel, have probably done certain things to you, have probably put you in certain positions have probably uh, done this and that, maybe behind your back, you know, speculation. Maybe she done some things that really made Brad crack. And the thing is, if Susan was doing things that eventually made Brad crack, then you got to understand that Susan ain't an angel in this. And, and, and not only that, you're so scared, and I really want to understand him. You're so scared of your husband Brad that you that they say that you brought your child to the party over at the Argyle. Say so you're so scared about that. That's what you did. But if you're so scared of your husband, how about you stay away from him? Why are you going there and being around your husband who who you you've witnessed become a monster? You're kind of scared of him. But yet you still go around them and stuff like that. There was a situation that was made in which uh, people were very, very uneasy around each other. For whatever reason, there was, a, there was probably a long buildup to that. What were the actions? And no, she didn't deserve it. No, that's not what I'm saying. What were the actions that Susan uh, Simpson took, even though it might be uncalled for, what exactly did Susan Simpson do while while Brad Simpson is slowly losing his mind to the point is now he wants to delete you? I bet you she did things and I want to know what. I want to know what. What kind of things? How are people betraying each other? How are they betraying their loved ones and, and escalating a situation to deadly consequences? That's what I want to know. And let's see if we find out more about this. And Lord knows most people ain't going to care nothing about this. What I'm talking about right now. And they're going to say, oh, what, you're victim blaming? No, I'm not. Situations escalate. You don't have a perfect angel on your hands being maybe perhaps deleted by her extremely evil satanic husband from out of nowhere. All right, so we're going to stay, uh, you know, on top of this uh, case until more details come out and stuff like that. Hopefully we get a better insight and hopefully we're all completely wrong about this. And Suzanne Simpson stumbles her ass home uh, and, and everything turns out, you know, like happily ever after. That's what I really hope. But we're going to find out one way or another. Right.